Hey guys, I just finished my interview for the PA program. I was very, very nervous going into it. I've done my makeup as you can see so that I would look professional today. I also have a dress shirt on. All right, back to the video. Hey guys, I am in a different room today, but that's besides the point. I think my interview went really well. I felt very confident afterwards and I felt that I answered the questions very honestly and to the best of my ability. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight as to how I prepared myself for the interview process. Before I go into it, I do want to let you guys know that even though I am part of the direct entry program, you still have to go through the interview process because it is required in order to matriculate into the master's portion of the program. I didn't have to apply to different schools and go through different interviewing processes, processes to be accepted into a school because I was essentially already accepted, but I just had to go through an interview process. So that took a lot of the weight off of my shoulders, but I do think that it's important to prepare yourself still for the interview because you are talking to someone who is going to be your future professor. So I think it's a good idea to make a good impression. I had created a notion page with all of these questions that I thought would potentially come up during my interviews. Okay, so first to prepare myself from the very bottom, of nothing i started with reading this book and this is the how to ace the physician assistant school interview by andrew rodican he's a practicing pac so he's gone through this process before and he also i think is part of the interviewing like committee at yale so i read this whole book as you can see and i took notes and annotations on things that i thought were really important he speaks about how pa schools are trying to transition from different interviewing types i can't find where i took notes about the different types of interviews but i can remember it vaguely one is your traditional interview where it's like a one-on-one -on -one and you go in and you do your interview that way. The second type is when you have multiple people interviewing you and it's like multiple faculty and then just one interviewee. And then another type is when you have one interviewer but multiple interviewees. So there's different applicants sitting in the room with you. And then the last one is very, very new. And I thought that Hofstra was going to do this because I had heard that it was like on the horizon. There was someone who said that they were trying to transition into this type of interview where it's almost like a conveyor belt of interviews where you go from one room to another to another. And in each room, you have a different interviewer and in each room, it's a different task. So one could be an interview one could be trying to do a hands-on procedure. That's the new one that a lot of schools are trying to transition into. And if I can find the name of that type of interview, there's a specific name for it. So I'm gonna type it out onto the screen here. I can tell you that mine was different this year, especially because of COVID time. So we weren't able to go into the school and have our interviews in person. We actually had them over Zoom, which I don't know if that's less scary or more scary. Personally, I feel like I would have done about the same if it was in person or if, if it was online. I feel like my performance would have been the same. Bottom line is I first started reading this book and I condensed all of the questions that I thought were very, very important into a notions page. So I'm going to pull that up so that I can tell you guys what questions I thought were really important. Okay, so a little bit of a change in scenery. First question that I thought was very important was why did you choose this particular program. And I think this one is important, especially for people who are applying through the CASPA system, because one, you really want to tailor to the specific school that you are applying to, because every program has their own special kind of, I guess, traits. Like they all really 
want a student who checks all of these boxes that they are particularly looking for. So a lot of the times you will find these traits that they're looking for on their page about the program. So I think definitely do your research, go onto their website and look for things that they prioritize in terms of characteristics for their students. Another really big question is why you want to be a PA. And I think this one is overlooked a lot because people tend to just say the generic I want to help people. I like medicine. Yes, those things might have made you want to become a PA, but there is more to the story that you have to kind of dig through and find out. A tip for this, I like to usually tell stories in my interviews because I think it makes it a little bit more personable and it sounds less of a rehearsed paragraph when you're responding to the interviewer. And when you tell a story, I think it captures their attention a little bit more. They're more intrigued into what you're saying because it's not just a clear cut answer. And instead you're telling an anecdote that might be quite interesting. This question in particular, I wasn't asked and it's tell me about yourself, but that could just be because my interviewer just didn't think that it was necessary because I could tell her about myself through other questions. She did ask one question that I didn't have on my list, which is how do you manage stress? And I think that's a really good question to kind of think about because one, PA school, medical school, any type of upper level schooling is going to be difficult and stressful. So I think them asking is just trying to forewarn you that it is hard, but also understand you as a person and how you balance your stress. Some other questions that I wasn't particularly asked but I incorporated into my answers with different questions that they had asked me were what are my biggest strengths and weaknesses. I think this one is something that a lot of people get asked. Most of the time they say that their weakness is that they're a perfectionist and I think that that's a very generic answer because everyone tends to say that. I mean it could be totally true that you are a perfectionist and that is one of your weaknesses but I just think that there could be something else and I think it's also important that if you're going to mention a weakness to kind of tie it into a strength so this is my weakness and I acknowledge that it's my weakness but I've learned from it and I've utilized my weakness to kind of help me find my strength. Another question is what is the difference between a PA and an NP? Now this I definitely had to do a lot of research about and also this book does a very good job at explaining the difference between the two. There is not much of a difference but there are subtle differences that you should know if you're going into a PA interview because that is definitely super important to know the difference especially when you're interviewing for one of the professions. And then along with that, you should definitely know what a PA does, meaning their scope of practice, what they're allowed to do, and how licensures can be different between different states. Additionally, I think it's important to be able to explain your shadowing experience or your healthcare experience if you've had any. I would say have some anecdotes or stories to tell. Ooh, another question that's really good. Do you prefer to work alone or in a group? And I think this is important because PAs are known to be really good at working as a team with their medical peers, meaning doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners. They're really well known for being an integral part of the team to provide care for their patient. And this question was asked in my interview and for this question, I would advise you to just be honest. I know some people don't like to work in groups and prefer to work independently. I mean, being a PA, you are going to be able to work alone, but you also have to be able to work in a group because you are not an independent practitioner. And it's important to know that your job is going to be working with other people. So preference is also just, they just want to know that you care 
can work with other people. So just because you prefer to work alone doesn't mean that you can't work with other people. So if you are going to say that you prefer to work alone, I think it's important to also mention that even though I don't like working with other people most of the time, I'm able to make sure that's addressed so that they don't think that you can't work with other people, if that makes any sense. Okay, so those were all the traditional questions that I think were really important. The other questions that I think were important were situational questions and ethical questions. I was asked both of these during my interview, so I definitely think that those are two important subcategories of questions. So situational is like if they give you an example of something that were to happen and they would want to know what you would do in that situation, that's a situational question. And then the ethical question is almost the same, but it's asking in particular, like, how would you feel about something instead of what you would do? Some ethical questions that might be asked are, what are your thoughts on cheating? What would you do if a patient came in and like you had to choose who to treat first? Some other things may be culture related. If you understand your ethics and you have a good stance on where you stand with certain topics that these questions are not too hard to answer because they are very much related to you and they're very personal to you and not to other people so as long as you're honest with your answer i think that you should be okay with ethical questions for my situational question i remember she had asked how i would react if someone had told me to administer some type of drug but i myself wasn't comfortable doing that same thing with ethical questions as long as you have a set stance on what you would do in certain situations i think this one shouldn't be as hard either so for example if your ultimate goal or stance in your profession is to keep your job to protect your patient's rights and also to give them the best care how would you formulate your answer to cater to those three goals so that's what i mean like if your interviewer presented you with a question and you ultimately wanted to do all of those three things, then your answer should cater and lead you to an end result where all of those three things are achieved. So now I'm gonna talk about clothing and how to prepare for the day of. I know that it is very scary to you know choose an outfit. We have to dress professional. So I was going through my closet, rummaging through literally all my dress shirts and everything. And I ultimately chose this white dress shirt with like a Peter Pan collar. This is what I looked like for my interview. So if you guys were ever curious, and the reason why I chose that was because it was over Zoom. So they would only be able to see me from about here up. So I really wanted this portion up to show that I was dressed professionally somehow. My advice for how to dress is that if you are a boy, to definitely wear a suit jacket and a dress shirt, maybe even a tie. I think that would definitely make it very professional. If you're a girl, I would say to wear a dress shirt and slacks. If you in particular want to wear a skirt, just make sure that it's long enough and that um, when you sit down, nothing inappropriate is being shown. As for jewelry, I would keep it to a very, very minimalistic jewelry. So I just wore my regular everyday hoops for my interview. I didn't have any rings on. I had my Apple watch on, but that was about it. I didn't really move my hands around that much during the interview, so she didn't really see that all that much. Oh, I also had like a necklace, but that was not shown because I had like a really high collar. I would definitely also say makeup, keep it to a very simplistic, natural kind of look. You don't want to go overboard with the eyeshadow or make anything too dramatic so that they are not really paying attention to your words, but instead are paying attention to your appearance. I think that is the key. It's to be professional and look elegant, but also not distracting. Some other tips, definitely get your rest the day before. I know it's very, very hard, especially when you're super anxious and nervous about the interview, but definitely get your rest. Make sure 
that you go to the interview early, whether that's leaving your house early. If it's on Zoom, make sure that you're in the waiting room at least five minutes before the interview starts, just in case there's technical difficulties. Something that I did to kind of help me gauge how my responses were was to record myself. I did this on Photo Booth where I clicked record and I kind of interviewed myself. So I would ask myself the questions that I had on my notions page and then I would not look at the screen do my answer and then go back to the screen, look at the next question, do my answer. And then at the very, very end, I would watch the whole video that I just recorded to see one, how long it is, two, how are my responses, three, if there's any awkward silence or any parts that I stumbled, I knew which question to go back to and kind of remember the key points that I wanted to talk about. Lastly, I think it's important to be mindful of when you're saying words like, um, uh, like all of those words that you input into sentences to kind of hold time and space. I think those you should be mindful of. They can be used, but don't overuse them. I definitely notice when I'm editing my videos, like sometimes I think I say that way too much. So I cut them out because it's just not necessary. And, and sometimes it cuts the flow of the sentence. So that's something that you can be mindful of. It's going to take a little time to adjust and also get out of that habit, but it's important to start that now rather than later. All right, I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's probably a really long one, so if you guys have extra questions about the interview process, definitely leave them down below. I will try to answer them to the best of my ability, even though I didn't have the traditional interview for PA school. If you are doing a PA interview soon, best of luck to you. I know you guys can do this. Don't stress. You guys are all super prepared. Do not worry. You have got this. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.